Hello, my keto friends. I'm so excited to be here. I'm going to talk to you about oxidative priority and how to officially burn fat, which, let's be honest, most people come to me want to lose weight. That's why they're jumping on the keto bandwagon, right? So here are my disclosures. I do have uh, quite a bit of cookbooks out there, nutritional guidebooks, and I'm co-founder of Maria Mind Body Health, and um, I started a coaching consulting service program. No, I did not sit in a tanning bed before I came here. Uh, we like to stay in Maui this time of year because if you know anything about Wisconsin, it is cold. Um, and yes, we do homeschool our children, or I should say my wonderful husband Craig does. And they are eight and nine. They know nothing but how to eat keto. And they encourage their friends to eat keto. They're really awesome. And if you haven't caught this, I've been hanging out with the whales. Even the locals call me the whale whisperer. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I paddleboard for hours on end. But always a whale ends up hanging out by me, which is really cool. Um, this slide is really important to me because um, when I was 16, I didn't even tell my mom this, but I went to the doctor. At that doctor's visit, I was told I had PCOS. I was like, I don't know what that is. Well, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it's basically a diabetes that affects female fertility. I was given an antidepressant because, yes, I was very depressed. You should have met me then. I was totally different. <laughs> um, I also had acid reflux, but my doctor told me that she got acid reflux when she drank water, so I thought that was just normal. Um, I also suffered severe IBS. And I was an athlete, even though I was 60 pounds heavier, I was like the best athlete. You cannot outrun a bad diet. But that same week, my beautiful golden retriever, she was losing patches of her hair, so I went to the vet. The first question the vet asked me was, what are you feeding her? Bing! Light bulb went off, and that's when I decided, it was actually after we both got better and her hair grew back, almost immediately my depression lifted, I understand that depression has many levels. For me, it helped. But I found it interesting, even at that young age, when I tried to cut out carbohydrates and sugar, guess what happened? The food pushers came out of the woodwork, including my mother. They didn't understand I was sick. People are triggered when we eat differently. But luckily, I'm a stubborn German girl, and I don't really care what anybody thinks, and I do my own thing, okay? But I just find it interesting, when someone's trying to cut alcohol or cigarettes, everybody's really respectful, and they don't even want to drink around you. But when it comes to food, people are triggered, and it's okay to, like, push a pie on them. Let's play a little game, all right? If you want, yell if it's keto or not, yes or no, okay? Is that keto? Cheese and nuts. Yes. Is it keto? Yes. I don't know what it is, but it said it was keto on Instagram. Is that keto? Instagram said it was keto. Is that keto? Is that keto? No. Technically, is it? OK, we're not playing the game, is it healthy or not? It's, is it keto? Is white rice with a bunch of fat on it keto? Will you read ketones if you eat that? Yes, you will. You will gain weight. But look it up. It's called like the keto rice. If you add in a bunch of MCET oil or fat to carbohydrates, you're probably going to read ketosis. Not a good thing. See, it's a fun game. You learn something. Is that keto? Heck yeah! Heck yeah! You probably have the highest ketones if you fast, right? Is that keto? You say no, but the last time I spoke at Low Carb Denver, one of the speakers said this was a great low carb treat. No, it is not. But it is keto. Is grilled chicken breast keto? It's a trick question. You're going to learn about it right now. How about that? It's my favorite slide. It's my favorite slide for many, many reasons. It does taste like butt. <laughs> but 
the scary part is I work with a lot of uh, patients that are going through, their, their children are going through epilepsy, and so we help, you know, drastically change their diet overnight. But when they have to go to the hospital, they are not allowed to feed them homemade food. And so there is a company out there that makes packaged drink type mix that's for epilepsy. And the ingredients include junk like that. So if anybody wants to start a helpful company, there's an idea. You're welcome. Is that keto? Heck yeah, it is. It's my protein noodle lasagna. And it is delicious. You can find it on my blog for free if you'd like. But yes, my kids, that's my, their favorite meal. It's really good. So what are your goals? It's one of the first questions I ask clients because what your diet looks like if you're trying to lose weight is going to look completely different if you have a child with epilepsy or you have seizures. It's totally different. I just spoke in Russia um, about the ketogenic diet, and it was a doctor that specialized, but like one of the best doctors for epilepsy. That diet looks different than what I'm going to teach you today, okay? We're talking about weight loss today. So oxidative priority, and it's how different macronutrients, how your body uses them for fuel. Um, we're going to break down into alcohol, exogenous ketones, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And that's just the main uh, idea of what we're all going to talk about. Number one is alcohol. Do not kill the messenger, people. But knowledge is power. I'm from Wisconsin. I think it's called the beer capital of the world. I think I'm an alien there because I don't drink alcohol. But knowledge is power, so there's no storage site. We know this. Um, when it comes to thermic defect of food, it has about 15%. Also, alcohol, it's not about, I get questions. If I drink a glass of wine, can I be in ketosis? Well, that's kind of a bogus question. More importantly, alcohol messes with your hormones. You know the big beer belly that men get? It's not a beer belly, it's an estrogen belly. Because alcohol stimulates estrogen up to 300%, and it decreases testosterone for up to 24 hours. Um, it also stimulates your appetite, gives you bad judgment. It's not biologically needed. You just need to be aware of that and accept it. If you're going to have a glass of wine, I don't care. I do not judge you. I take a group of people to Italy for a ketogenic educational th thing. If you want a glass of wine, there's no judging on my part. I don't care. Exogenous ketones. Again, do not kill the messenger. Nobody hate me about this, but this is important. Oxidative priority number two. Your body's first going to digest alcohol if it's in your body. Second, it's going to digest exogenous ketones. There's little to no storage sites. It's not biologically needed. It's expensive. Your body can make all the ketones it needs when you're keto adapted. Higher ketones do not mean better results. It does not. Guess what? Mine are really low. They were this low this morning because I was out running. That means I'm using my ketones for energy. I don't get depressed if they're low. It's OK. You're still in ketosis. Again, you can add MCT oil over white rice and read higher ketones. Doesn't mean it's a good thing. Carbohydrates, oxidative priority number one. What's interesting is, mom, I hope you're not listening. My mom's a really smart woman, but she didn't understand that fruits and vegetables are a carbohydrate. And I said, yes, mom, there's only three macronutrients. Despite what some programs say, fruits and vegetables are not a free food. They're a carbohydrate. Okay? I didn't say the name. Moderate storage capacity site, about 2,000 calories. The highest amount of insulin is needed to raise this. It's not very satiating. To me, it causes more hunger. It's not biologically needed. Your body can make all the glucose it needs from glycerol, which is stored body fat or protein. And people worry about, what about the gut flora? Let me tell you, collagen is way better for the gut flora. So get the chicken wings on, get the ribs on, and chew around that bone. Protein. Oxidative priority number three. There's limited storage capacity. It's about three to 400 calories, but you get this huge thermic effect of food. It's about 25%. That's kind of like the meat sweats that you get. Yeah? It's preferentially used for muscle protein. 
for building lean mass. It's a very expensive fuel, so it doesn't make glucose very easily. It only does that if there's no other fuels available. And it's biologically essential. I get women all the time, oh my gosh, I'm losing my hair. Are you doing fat bombs and fat fasts? You might want to switch that to a beef stick, all right? Um, it helps build lean mass. Everybody wants muscles as they get strong. It helps with hair growth. Your thyroid has a lot of amino acids that it needs. Fat is oxidative priority number five. It theoretically has an unlimited storage capacity. Um, smallest amount of insulin needed. Yes, it raises it a little bit. You need to know that. It's enough to stop lipolysis or break your fast. Um, it's moderately satiating calorie for calorie, and it's biologically essential for making hormones, um, absorbing minerals like vitamins A, D, E, and K. Those are fat soluble. Don't take your vitamin D on an empty stomach, people. Um, and it's important for cellular health. So why keto can be so helpful for weight loss? We're going to get not rid of number one. I will. You can make your choice. We're going to skip the money on exogenous ketones. Carbohydrates, beside a fried onion, I was telling Dr. Barry this, I like to eat carnivore, but I'm not eliminating the fried onion on my burger. I'm just putting it out there. Protein, you're going to get enough to build lean mass. And it's about 0.8 times your lean, your lean mass. It's an, I'm not saying a ton, but most people don't even get this much. And then eat fat to satiety. When you're keto adapted, you're primed to use fat for fuel, and that could be dietary fat or body fat. You get this idea that you need to eat 70% fat in order to be in ketosis. But you need to think of that 70% as part of your body fat. If you want to use that for fuel, and I'm not saying no fat, do not kill the messenger here. I'm just telling you that you do not need, this is what happens. I talk to people on the phone or Skype or whatever. Well, Maria, I didn't hit my fat percentage of the day, so I did a shot of MCT oil before bed. You laugh, but I hear that time and time again. You don't need to do that, okay? Aiming for percentages will cause you to fail if weight loss is your goal. If someone was helping for seizures, I would say, get it on, do a shot. But I think something else would taste better than a shot of MCT oil. So the thermic defect of food, effective uh, calories and macronutrients. So there's the chart again. But let's talk about example, bulletproof coffee. Please don't kill the messenger. I worked at coffee shops since I was 15 years old. I, had, I get the caffeine addiction, but you need to understand, if you have 500 calories of Bulletproof coffee, you are not fasting. You just had 500 calories, okay? But people think that they are, plus the impact of what caffeine is doing, cortisol-wise or whatnot. Um, instead, I would choose to break my fast with 500 calories of a steak, okay? You're getting a good amount of protein to build lean mass and muscle, and the effective calories is 401 versus 485. And plus, it's going to help maintain your muscle. Chewing your calories signals things in your brain, like leptin and ghrelin. Those are the hormones that tell you when you're hungry and tell you when you're full and to stop eating. They, they trigger and they, they work. Sadly, um, if you don't know, I'm a big bow hunter, and we have ticks all over the place, and my husband's dealing terribly with Lyme disease. Um, he had to have cavitation surgery. If you don't know what that is, it's, it's bad it's with your teeth. Anyway, I was making him some keto shakes, all homemade stuff. He's like, wow, I'm always full. There really is something to this chewing your calories. It really does help. Uh, protein sparing modified fast. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a great for ramping up weight loss and breaking stalls. My protein sparing modified fast recommendation is also dairy free. Do not kill the messenger, I'm from Wisconsin. You can get cheese curds at the gas station, okay? But we poo poo gluten in this keto world, but a lot of people don't want to address the dairy issue. And Dairy is a more common allergen 
than gluten is. And so if you're living off of cheese and nuts, is that something that I would recommend? Probably not, you know, um, especially if you have autoimmune disorders. So how to do keto the right way? <laughs> this guy is like super funny. My kids are just awesome. But we were on the low carb cruise with Dr. Barry and Nisha and Jimmy and everybody. And at dinner, they give you salads or whatever you want. And he looks at the guy, he goes, what do you think, I'm a vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's hilarious. So how to get keto adapted? Focus on two things. Keeping carbs as low as possible. I don't play golf, but you get the idea that the lowest score wins. If you see the same product and one is like three carbs lower, you'll find this in a lot of things. Go for the lower carb one. Hit your protein goal. It's about 0.8 times your lean mass. If you do those two things, you will be in ketosis. And then eat fat to satiety. And that's why the trick question was, is a grilled chicken breast keto? Because some people say it wouldn't be. But it is. Fat keeps you satiated and it helps keep hunger at bay, so does protein. But don't reach, eat fat to a percentage. Um, if carbs and protein are right, you will be in ketosis regardless of fat intake. And there's naturally fat in things like steak and hamburger and stuff like that. You don't need to add a stick of butter to your steak. Um, when you're keto adapted, you can use dietary fat and body fat the same. Um, and if you use less dietary fat, you will be in lipolysis or the negative fat flux even better. It's a win-win. So don't forget to get your salt on. Abby Ross, I brought you salt from Hawaii because I love you. I am a salt snob. I carry salt with me all the time. Um, just because it's kind of fun, right? Uh, but you want to focus on drinking more water, and I tell people, set about two and a half teaspoons of salt aside by your cooking vessel, because we're in this area of health and all of this information to cut the salt out to. And if you don't get two and a half teaspoons of salt, it's actually kind of hard. If you're making some eggs for breakfast and you make some steak for dinner or whatever it is, you might not hit your salt intake. And then you might want to sprinkle it into your water or something like that. Because when you eliminate carbohydrates, along goes a lot of water loss. Everybody's like, oh, I lost 10 pounds in a week. You know, that's probably a lot of water. Don't get too excited because you're probably going to get constipated. You have low moods. Your energy's low. Walking upstairs, you have those heavy legs, you know. You can't just drink more water because you're just going to urinate more out. You need something to hydrate you, and that's where the salt comes into play. But if you're afraid of salt, like we've been told to stay away from it, then you're probably going to get constipated. People think that I need fiber to go number two. And I tell them, you know, newborn, have you have a newborn baby? They poo all the time and they don't get any fiber, right? You don't need fiber. Um, and then thinking about your potassium, always ask your doctor, some medications, and, um, you don't want to overdo that, and magnesium. Um, I like to call it the carb withdrawal, not the keto flu. More tips. If you don't, get a slow cooker. It's awesome. My family's awesome, and they help clean up dinner while I prepare dinner for the next night. I've always been kind of a planner that way, and so I'll fill the slow cooker. I have three. I put you know, different things. And then, like, I like soups and all this type of stuff, and it's great for leftovers. Kids can heat up something as they need for lunch, whatever. And keto waffles. I make waffles without even any nut flour, so don't be like, you just said to stay away from nuts and dairy. I don't use them. You don't need them to make things. Uh, pizza quiche, my kids love. Keto muffins, that type of stuff. Um, lunch, always pack before plan ahead. Have it packed the night before so you don't be like, oh man, I'm going to McDonald's because I forgot a lunch. You know? Even if there's some keto option you get there, it's always better to pack your own. Everybody complains and says keto costs too much and it takes too much time. Hear that all the time. So it was really fun when we got home from the beach one day. This was summertime in Wisconsin. It was like three o'clock and Chipotle is like three miles away. And I said, Craig, turn your video camera on. I'll turn mine on. And we both took a kid. I made Chipotle at home, and he drove to Chipotle. 
Not only was it a half the amount of money, and all I used was organic stuff at home. Not a snob, but that's all I had. So it cost half the amount than Chipotle. And by the time he got home, everything was cleaned up and I had leftovers for the next day. So don't tell me that. It, yes, it takes effort, but hey, that's all right. Results. I'm known as kind of the underdog. You may have never heard of me, and that's okay, because you know what? I'd rather be bow hunting or hanging out with the whales any day besides being on like live videos on Instagram and all of that type of stuff that doesn't fill my soul very well. So I'm not uber popular on those things, and that's okay, because who I help is important. If they want my help, I want to help them. If you don't know who that is behind the books, anybody know, Red, yell it out. It is Halle Berry. Yes, she's holding my book, and we talk once in a while. Um, and um, I love food. I will always love food, but I want it quick and easy, just like you do. So I understand how to make recipes very quick and easy that are delicious. If you don't uh, know who Valerie Bertinelli is, she's awesome. Cookbook author herself. She uses my books, too. And on Monday, Al Roker made my bread on TV. I just, I just wish he would have said, do you want to come on TV? Yes, Al, I do. But anyway, people like him, they don't have assistants making their food. They're doing it. So they understand. They want quick and easy stuff. You can do it. You just need to want to do it. Weight loss. These are just some testimonies. I don't usually even ask for them, but people that I worked with a couple years ago will email me, um, post on Facebook. Um, I'm going to go a little quick because I know we're running short on time. But these are just some of the people that have lost tremendous amounts of weight and feel amazing. And don't say you can't do it because you're too old because it's not true. On the top, you see people that are 73 and 77 and never felt better. Type 2 diabetes, um, I, you just heard um, the woman before me speak, the doctor, about the A1C going to, you know, 10 to 5 in no time at all. And what's really cool is you get to eat really good food, right? Check this out. All of these people getting off medication in three months, A1C from 11.1 to 5.1. Kidney function, totally, extremely dangerous. And now went from severe to mild from Teresa. Eczema and skin issues. Um, I remember a mother contacted me, asked if I would call her daughter in college and help her out. Um, she was just weeping. And, you know, skin issues, that time is so hard already. And then you have, you know, bumps all over your face and your legs. Um, within three days, her picture is going to pop up. These are all just different testimonies going through. Um, within three days, you can see her legs. She took a picture in the bathtub. Within three days, yes, I used a few supplements, but food was healing that. IBS, acid reflux, Crohn's and colitis. What's the first thing the doctor tells you when you're diagnosed with Crohn's or colitis? Cut the fiber out, right? Why not do that before it's a problem? Multiple sclerosis, Graves, and Parkinson's, these are just some of the amazing testimonies um, coming from that. You can den not deny these testimonies. It's amazing. Alzheimer's, moods, and autism. Um, I'm going quickly because I want to show you this really cool one. Fibro, Lyme, and chronic pain. I, I want to get something clear. Yes, my husband's dealing with Lyme disease. Keto's not going to heal Lyme, but it makes him be able to function with the pain. No longer have IBS symptoms, no longer have fibro pain. Um, goodbye to migraines. Migraines can ruin your life. Kidney function, um, you know, going from extreme to normal within no time at all. Sorry, there's a really cool testimony that came in like this last week. Off medications. Oh, there's just so many. Families, nothing makes me happier than when I see family do this together because it's hard to get your kids on keto if they're already addicted to sugar. Check this guy out. 
one of my keto coaches that just graduated. This is her husband. Um, in 18 months, he went, uh, lost over 200 pounds um, from 400 to 176. He had three heart attacks and he was going to die. He chose to live. So that's the end. <laughs> I didn't know. Thank you very much.